pretty big jump for you, the ranking and everything, where he's ranked in the UFC? Uh, I mean, he's an awesome fighter. That's why he's ranked high, and uh, he can do it all. He's well-rounded, so I have to be ready to go on Saturday. And what are you going to do? Because he really likes to keep the pressure. He likes to keep the pace going. What have you done to pretty much negate that kind of uh, offense from him? Uh, I just worked hard in practice, did what my coaches said to do, and everything else will take care of itself. I mean, I've trained in all aspects, so I'll be ready to go. Robbie, you've worked at a lot of different camps. Pat Militich, of course, for most of your career. What led you to American Top Team? Uh, they actually asked for me to come down before my Koscheck fight and, uh, about three weeks before, maybe a month before. Um, I decided to go down there because uh, Pitbull fought Koscheck and I thought they had a good game plan, so I went down there and they fine-tuned me and got me ready to go. How does that uh, How does that camp compare to the other camps you had? Not saying better or worse, but you know, how much have they helped you um, just kind of revamp things as you've been back in the UFC? Uh, it's awesome going down there. As far as, I mean, I don't have to do any thinking out there. They put me in the situations I need to be in. They tell me when to work out. They tell me what to do, and then training partners alone. I mean, there's lots of guys you've never heard of and guys you've heard of that are really tough that push me every day. Robbie, forgive me if this was asked earlier, but what do you think gives you the advantage against uh, uh, Rory? Uh, Rory's awesome in all aspects. I mean, he's well-trained. I just need to go out there and get after him and take the fight to him, and if he wants to fight me, then let's get down. Is there, is there any concern that, you know, he's just going to try and uh, put you on the ground? And uh... No, there's no concern of that because, I mean, I worked all aspects, as I always do for all my camps, so I'll be ready to be on the ground on my feet and everything else will take care of itself. Do you think experience? I mean, you're very relaxed. You've done, you've been around the block a few times. Uh, do you think that'll be a difference? Uh, I don't know. I don't really think about it too much. I mean, all the work's done, so I'm just relaxing and getting the weight down and having a good time with my buddies. His last fight versus Drake Ellenberger wasn't really all that spectacular. What did you think of that fight, and did you see it? And do you think that he'll try to employ any of those tactics against you? Uh, I think what he did, I mean, he won. Most importantly, he got the W, he moved up, and he got away from a really dangerous opponent without taking any damage. So it was a smart fight. Uh, fans didn't really like it. Maybe the UFC didn't like it, but he did what he thought he needed to do to win. And I'm not too worried if he comes out with that game plan because I'll be ready to fight. Well, he's widely considered one of the next heirs to kind of that welterweight throne. Assuming he gets by you, they'd probably give him a title shot. Is it reverse for you? You feel like if you take out Rory, you'd like to get that title shot? I mean, that would definitely be a good opportunity, and uh, I'd be very excited to take that. Well, he mentioned being around the block. You are one of the true UFC veterans. You've been around this sport for a decade plus. You toiled in other promotions for a while, and it was up and down, and now we're sitting here back at the 20th anniversary. Was there ever a point in your career where you thought, man, I don't know if I'll ever get back to the UFC and the grind of it all? No, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time, and I set my sights on fighting and enjoying it and uh, that's what I did. I was always excited to fight. I always knew I could be the best in the world and the UFC, there was never like a point where I was like, oh man, I don't think I'll ever get there. I knew I'd come back whenever I wanted to come back and wreck shop. So with this being the 20th anniversary, can you uh, tell us what was your first exposure to the UFC? Do you remember? Uh, well, I met Dana and Hawaii signed me and then I actually came to a fight. It was when Matt fought Sakurai for the title. And it was a pretty exciting fight. In terms of the first time you ever saw like Poise Gracie or anyone uh, like that? Maybe in like middle school and I rented a VHS copy and watched a couple fights. It was one of those things where you knew you had to do this kind of right away? Well I did martial arts growing up sure. so I mean I was a scrappy kid so I fought, I scrapped, I wrestled, I did taekwondo box so and I'm from Bentendorf so Pat Milicic is from there it's just this is what I'm going to do I, as soon as I was 16 I decided this was what I wanted to do do you have a favorite fight from kind of the early days of the UFC at all like way way back like VHS you were watching it. not really Maybe an experience um, that you had when you fought there uh, the first time, like one of your favorite experiences with the company? No, because, I mean, 
I've fought so many, so many times, but just hanging out with the guys, all my buddies, all my training partners, guys I sweat with, guys I have a great time with. It was just hanging out with those guys is probably the most memorable. Was this camp a lot better for you being that you didn't have like the last fight you had, there was a change of opponent about two weeks right before the fight. Was this one easier just to focus in on one guy the entire time? No, not really because bef I always concentrate on myself and my coaches kind of dink around with who I'm fighting. I concentrate on getting myself stronger, working on my jiu-jitsu, working on all aspects, and then the closer I get to the fight, the more I'll maybe start watching tape. So I don't really worry too much about them. As soon as I'm awesome at everything, then I can worry about him, which obviously that will never happen because that's the game, right? <laughs> Robert, usually heading into a card, if people are talking about a left hand, it's yours. And this time, everyone's talking about Johnny Hendricks' left hand. I'm just wondering, as a guy who throws a real powerful left hand, what do you think of Hendricks' left hand? I mean, it's freaking powerful. He puts the guys to sleep, obviously. I mean, he's doing a great job, and he's getting a title fight. So I'm excited for him. I'm excited for the fight. But I'm just worried about myself, really. Who do you think has a more dangerous left hand, you or Johnny? <laughs> He's put a lot of guys to sleep too, so I mean, I wouldn't want to get hit by either of us. <laughs> you mentioned being brought up, uh, you know, and living in Bettendorf and in the Quad Cities. How much, how much influence did that have on you, as a as a MMA artist? I mean, it was a, it was huge. I mean, when you're coming up and you have Matt Hughes, Jens Pulver, Tim Sylvia, Pat Militich, you have got Jeremy Horn. You have guys like that to train with and guys to compete with. Guys who have fought in Japan all over the world and you you see these guys every day you're just embracing the grind and getting after it and you have no choice but to succeed